looks like nine and a half inches from outside to outside roughly about eight inches from inside to inside and the flange itself is about three quarters of an inch all right from center of the bolt hole ish about 20 and a half inches hey what up guys um, welcome back to the DSR chain conversion saga uh, so we got the swing arm back on got the shock mounted got this snazzy little rubber uh, I don't know chain guide I don't know if it's a guide guide but anyway it's supposed to keep the chain off the swing arm uh, I don't think I can use the actual chain guide because that's supposed to like go down here ish but the DSR swing arm does not appear to have provisions because there's supposed to be like another piece that bolts to the arm and then this bolts to the uh, intermediate piece don't have it uh, not super concerned the, uh, the swing arm main pivot bolts are 75 foot-pounds of torque and I'm not trying to tell you guys how to live your life but if you want some advice and suggestions on how to save time don't tighten these uh, motor mount bolts down until you have the swing arm in uh, I did put the swing arm in when the swing arm was naked so no shock uh, and I did have some uh, tension between the frame and the, the swing arm. Mm -hmm. So what I did mm -hmm. is I mm -hmm. backed off. I backed off the motor mount bolts on this side only, and then I was able to fit the swing arm in the frame quite easily. So what I did after that is I torqued the main pivot bolts for the swing arm. 75 foot pounds and even then I could still uh, basically freely swing the swing arm with no tension so after that that's when I did my secondary adjustments on the jack nuts and then I torqued down the motor mount bolts and even after doing so I was still able to uh, pretty easily move the swing arm uh, with no effort so I was happy with that I don't feel like it's binding at all uh, and then the only other like footnote for this update is this zip tie right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's holding the ground strap in there uh, onto the shock because of some amazing engineering uh, dictating the, the zip tie holding the ground strap to the, uh, the shock body. It was like that from the factory. Uh, I elected not to put on the zip tie before I put on the shock. I considered it, but I figured I didn't want any kind of tension on the on the ground strap while I was kind of fidgeting with the with the strut or shock to get it in there. Uh, so in retrospect, I probably would have decided to do the zip tie before mounting the shock. Uh, but that one is relatively trivial, but it would have saved me it would have saved me a little bit of a uh, frustration um uh, so that's 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 good man uh we got some uh some progress here the brake cylinder is fully mounted uh the brake pedal pivot bolt is mounted i believe for the final time during this particular conversion uh so hopefully uh next time around i'll get the tire and the brake caliper mounted uh, but I confess, I realized today that I still have not gone out and bought a chain breaker tool. So that might impede my progress a little bit because I'm not sure when I'm going to get out to go buy one. Uh, but hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Pretty excited. Uh, 
Shout out to Anthony uh, for doing the math on the uh, chain conversion ratio versus the uh, the stock belt ratio. Um, so it looks like it is going to be a little more torquey. So I'm excited about that. Can't wait to get on the bike and try it. But that will come in due time. We're running out of parts to install, guys. So that's a positive thing. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what life has in store. If uh, if I can get out here regularly, should be just a few days. But we don't know. Things might come up. I might get tired, etc. So we will see what happens. Um, I do not plan. I'm putting the little fender thing back on. That's not my plan, but I don't know. I might change my mind. I've had it off for quite some time. Uh, the variable there is it was just a belt, not a chain. But we'll see. We will see. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the update. Um, I don't think I missed any critical information. Oh, uh, another trivial thing is right here on the, the, the guide, there's kind of like a, a tab that's supposed to fit into this uh, opening in the swing arm. Let's see if I can catch this one. Yeah, there's like, there's a tab right here, right on the front. And there was a tab on the rear, but I elected to trim it because um, I think this uh, bar here may have a little more girth than the uh, the FX or the FXS. So the tab was kind of running into the side of the swing arm right there. Uh, and it was kind of contorting the rubber. You can still see it's kind of lifting here a little bit. But uh, I did my best to make it fit. It's not an exact science, but you know what? I'll do what I could. Cool. So I think I, I, think I covered all the little nooks and crannies of today's update. And see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace out.